<laughs> it deletes the default cube to begin with. Even an AI deletes the default cube before adding things in. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Today, we're going to explore using chat GPT in order to write some Python code for Blender for us. Now, I've trialed it in the background, and I've been absolutely amazed. But one warning here, it's not consistent. If you want to follow along, you can go to, let's just make this bigger for a second, chat.openai.com forward slash chat. Okay, so let's just try something straight away. Let's stack five cubes on top of each other in Blender using uh, Python. That's very badly worded. Let's just roll with it. I'm not gonna correct typos either. It seems to be absolutely fine with that. Now, it is very, very busy at the moment, so it can take a few minutes to do something, uh, which is annoying. And usually, if it's hanging like this, it's just overloaded at the moment, at which point I'm going to have to stop the video and wait until it's quieter. Oh, here we go. So it's telling me what it's going to do. And it's also used a for loop. OK, this is brilliant because before when I was trying it, it wouldn't use a for loop initially. So let's just go and take this. OK, there's a copy code button I should have learned by now. And let's re remove everything from our, our scene and Let's run that code. OK, so that doesn't work, did it? This is one of the things about GPT. It can end up sounding very confident. I mean, it's given us this here. If we run through this code. We'll probably work out why it's not there. Move the other cubes above the first cube. Interesting that it's only done one four. There's, there are other cubes there by the looks of things, but where they've gone, who knows? Let's delete everything out of our scene again and let's just try something else. Let's clear down what we've got here, actually, so we can reset the thread so it won't remember anything from before. Using Python, write a script. I will be able to type one day a script to stack four cubes on top of each other in Blender. Let's see how it handles this. <laughs> it deletes the default cube to begin with. Even an AI deletes the default cube before adding things in. Now, this is a very linear script. I would not write something like this unless I was really, really testing something very specific. Um, uh, cube not found, of course. Let's let's just uh, get rid of that. Go file, new, general. So it's assumed that there's something in the scene, which is actually quite a clever thing for it to do. I've not asked it to delete the cube, which is, you know, maybe a bit backwards because I haven't asked it to do any of that. But there we go. We've got four cubes stacked on top of one another. One of the great things about this is we can start adding to it. Add a monkey to the top. Now, does it is it aware of Suzanne the monkey? Use the following code. So it's, it's built upon its previous stuff Add the second cube. Now, one thing I have noticed here is if this gets too long, then we're going to end up with it just pausing and stopping. So I can see straight away that's going to add it on top. Absolutely fine. I'm not going to actually paste that in. What I'm going to do is um, can you add loops? Because I wouldn't ha add it in, add it in, add it in. I would actually loop around those cubes. Let's see if it does that. It's also deleting the default cube, which you can't do, of course, the second time around. So I'm going to delete that. Delete everything from the scene. Add in the cube. There we go. So here it goes. Oh, it's split it out. So here's our loop. To add the monkey. Oh, it's separated out. That. Oh, that is interesting. <laughs> okay, well, let's see if this new script works. And this is great. You know, I haven't had to train it or tell it anything about the Blender API. And there we go. We've got Suzanne on top of four cubes. OK, so that's pretty straightforward. How far can we push this? Well, I've tried a couple of things. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I'm going to delete everything but that bottom cube. Build a Mayan uh, pyramid. This is actually one that I've done um, some work on myself um, in an introduction to Python course I'm working on at the moment is building a Mayan pyramid. Let's see how the, the AI handles it. I'm going to be specific here, and sometimes you have to massage the language that you use uh, to uh, build a script to build, a, uh, sorry, write a script to build a Mayan pyramid out of cubes. Now, the first time I ran this, it worked absolutely perfectly. 
the second time I ran it, it failed miserably. This is interesting. It's looping around. Um, this is completely different code. I'll, if this doesn't work, by the way, because I am just going to copy and paste it in. If this doesn't work, I'll show you a screenshot of the code as I was playing around with it before. Um, okay, that's an interesting interpretation of it. It kind of works. We can see that it's, it's building it out of cubes and then adjusting the cubes. Uh, widths and heights to try and fit it in that didn't work let's just blank this out the way and say so write a script to build a mayan period from only primitive in blender that should have said primitives but there we go so it's just giving it us instructions okay that's writing a script rather than code so i need to be more specific Okay, so this is great. This is giving us an actual script, as in how to... Oh, it's giving us materials. I didn't ask it to do that. Oh, wow. That is impressive. You see, it's done extra stuff here. I don't really want to add materials at the moment, although it seems like it can do that. It's set a diffuse color um, and specular intensity. So this isn't a material in the same way that you'd usually set up a material using a node graph. This is just setting it manually. It's looking like it's setting it to a mid-level gray um, and then applying the material. That's kind of cool. It's separated it out. Uh, let's try something new. It's obviously not going to do the Mayan pyramid. This is what it did the first time I ever tried it and it's not done it since. Um, and that's important to realize that if you copy exactly what I'm doing, you're going to get a different result. So build a castle out of cubes this is absolutely nuts oh no it's frozen i hate it when it freezes like that that means it's just run out um can you put this all in one script oh please work oh uh look like a myron pyramid and a castle okay it's remembered uh, the stuff from before i'm not sure whether this is going to work it's probably gonna stop typing everything out yep there we go oh no 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 with two walls and a Mayan pyramid in your blender scene. Well, let's just give it a go. Let's see what it ends up looking like. Let's get rid of everything here. Get rid of everything here. Are we still deleting the default cube? I have no idea. Uh, no, we're not. That's fine. Let's so decided not to do that anymore. And we end up with this. Yeah. This is not a great demonstration of, of, of it working. That's fine. Let's try something completely new. Let's go to the menu, reset the thread. Okay, so I'm not going to play around with the Mayan Pyramid anymore, but I will put up on the screen here. The first time I ever tried it, it was successful. Um, and this is one of the things. AI is not coming for our jobs at the moment. It will eventually reach a point where it is very, very good. At that point, what we're able to do as artists or developers is use it to help us, use it to explore ideas really quickly. Ultimately, it's very good at spewing out rubbish, but looks good rubbish and that's one of the things that can trip you up so um let's try something completely new here let's uh write a blender script and what do we want to do to create stonehenge out of cubes now obviously it knows what a uh, a mayan pyramid is so i'm guessing it's going to know what stonehenge is and th this is one of the things we can just explore ideas and i would say that looking at code that i've written and looking at code that it's produced, it does it in a very dumb way. It may work, it may not work. <laughs> and it's just a matter of trying. I have seen it come out with uh, a very interesting way of, of actually approaching a problem, which is great because it means that I'm also learning because it has produced something that does indeed work. Okay, so in front of us here, we have what the Mayan pyramid that it did the first time around. So a couple of things that uh, is really interesting um, and certainly not the way that I would uh, approach this code. I'd probably not have the bpy.ops.mesh.primitive. I, I would make this much more readable. I mean, it is quite readable at the moment because it's very short, um, but this was an incredible uh, just approach and I didn't delete the default cube or anything. You can see it got it straight away. I wish I'd recorded what the prompt was. I wasn't thinking about this when I was just exploring it. In fact, I wish I even, I was recording at the time because I got really excited when it nailed this first time. But anyway, so you can see here, it actually made some really concise code 
and I think it failed on the scene.updates at the end or something along those lines. So it can do some really useful stuff, but sometimes it does it in a different way. And I'll show you. Uh, let's have a look at what it's done here. Oh, 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 ouch. Okay, it's made an array of positions. That's not what it did when I tried this before. It actually used a math library, it drew a circle and placed um, the pillars and stuff on the circle but let's see what it's created i mean ultimately it's created this big block here let's get rid of that so this is what its interpretation of stonehenge is it's wrong that isn't stonehenge uh let's just for argument's sake uh say that is close but doesn't look like stonehenge it needs to be circular Ah, here we go. This looks a bit more promising. I'm not going to say it's going to work because who knows what it's going to create. Let's just clear our scene out while we're waiting for it to write our code for us. And boom, let's just run it. Okay, interesting. Let's get rid of that. It's made there. Okay, you see, it's got an idea of what's going on. And when I tried this before, I tried it with things like, oh, could you make the uh, could you make the Stonehenge a bit more irregular? Um, and if I've got footage of that, I'll pop that up on the screen. I tried to massage it to get it to the point, at which point I could have just made it myself in half the time. So one of the things that um, I did have quite a bit of success with was writing some helper code. So let's clear everything down. And again, I should really put this in a buffer. I'm going to write a script to select every object in blender or something along those lines so if i have a look at my objects here they they're all named cube right all of these stem from a cube that's been manipulated so i've asked it to write a script to select all mesh objects so i'm being specific about what type of object in blender uh with names containing the word cube now this is something that i have done in the past so i'll be interested to see how it approaches it and what we'll also do here is add in a point lamp just over here and let's add in a camera as well it doesn't matter what they're pointing at it's just so we've got something else in our scene so we can make sure it is only selecting the things that we want it to okay let's run that so this is interesting it's approaching it from a scene level so we see here bpy.context.scene i would typically approach this um I, I suppose that is quite a, a neat way of doing it if i was going to do selecting all types though i'd probably go to bpy.data.objects um, if the type equals mesh that's correct the the, the the cube is in the object's name and said it's true nice so the other thing that we're going to add in really quickly is add in an icosphere just here so we know it is only selecting objects that aren't named cube okay let's copy that go to our code whoop, and paste that in make sure nothing is selected and run our script look at that that is awesome the only thing that this is done that you now need to work out is make sure that this is the is not the active selected because that's going to do stuff to that that icosphere um make sure one of those objects is the active selected now of course this time round one of the things i've not done um i've not asked it uh, and it knows that it requires python code that's important um let's just see if that works copy code paste it in Beep. Yes, yes, now one of our objects is the active selected. Perfect. So this is how it can really help by making some helper code for you, or just, as I say, exploring different things. The important thing is that AI is not coming after us yet, but we can use it to support what we're doing, to help us and aid us in producing better work more quickly, which is brilliant. Wow, so this is this is absolutely amazing. I love this sort of stuff and it being developed, whether it's creating images for us or writing code for us. I think this is a great helper tool. Now, if you try this yourself, I'd love to see what you end up creating. So do share that with me. And if you want to learn about Python in Blender in a bit more structured manner, then check out these videos here. I'll see you in the next one.